Welcome to another budget and leggy video now. This is the last part of this Astra video. We have done everything else in the engine and they also want pads and discs because as you can see, they are very, very bad. So what we're going to do here today, the wheel is off because I was doing the timing belt. There's no point in putting the wheel back on just for the video. So you take your wheel off first. We're going to be doing front pads and discs and rear pads and discs. We'll do it in the same video. And yeah, should be nice and straightforward. So what I'm going to do first is because this has got a uh, retaining bolt for the brake disc, it's a five mil Allen key, if memory serves, yes. It's the thing I always forget to do, but if you can take it off first, it just makes your life a bit easier. Because if it is tricky to get off, you can actually wedge the disc. But what you can do sometimes is not that, but kind of give it a bit of a, which is not going to work. So what we can now do is wedge the disc like that, or not like that. Wedge the disc like that. And make sure this is straight and hopefully, no. Now, that's gonna just round. So what we'll do, if I carry on with that, that's just gonna round, then we'll end up having to drill in. It's just hassle we don't need. So we give the old shock treatment, mind your eyes. You can hear all the rust coming off that. Now, let's see what that's done. Lock that. And there we go. See? That saves all the hassle of drilling it and all that. Good shock does the trick. just rusty so if we did that after we took off the caliper and stuff it just would have been a lot harder to actually wedge the disc so that's why we do it now take off the retaining spring we're going to turn the wheel now just so we can uh, get to the caliper also remember to have taken off the brake reservoir cap because it's just easier if you do well it's just better if you do especially doing it this way push the piston back and again it's easy to do it now but just be careful you can't do this on the back of some cars because they're actually wind backs so you need to know your system just like everything Push that back. It's going back nice. Which is always good. A bit more leverage there. Go all the way back. Lovely. Take off the dust caps for the carrier or the caliper. This is going to be 7 mil Allen key. 7 mil. There we go. And these are the two bolts that hold on the caliper. Always crack both of them first. Again, just because it's easier. Oh, this one's tight. There we go. Because we were going to want to clean them. You can see that kind of black mark there, which is all grease and crap over the years. Do so you want to clean that because the caliper then can slide freely? If you don't clean it and re-grease it, what can happen is you can have uneven break where your caliper might not even work and just kind of seize on or not even work at all. So I, I like to use molly grease because molly grease doesn't compact. Do not use copper grease on these. Copper grease acts like sandpaper. There's bits, of, there's bits in it. And as that slides up and down and in and out, naughty, um, it will just kind of wear at this and then you'll have more problems so you don't want to do that so you can see it 
There was a little bit left on the pads. When you compare them to the new ones. But on this particular side, it was more the brake disc had, well, it's just completely gone with rust and crap and yeah. Once you replace the discs, you have to replace the pads because the, the, the pads are going to be worn into the old disc shape. And if you put brand new discs on and you leave the old pads, it's going to take ages from the bed and they're not going to work properly. You just believe me, replace everything. You do one side, obviously goes without saying, do the other side. I mean, it just makes sense. If you don't, you are seriously just asking for trouble. Now, that caliper can stay there. It's not under any pressure. I might just hang it up there just in case it decides to move on me. If I can, and especially when I take off the disc, it's going to be kind of just flopping there. So that's out of my way. Two 18 mils just at the back. Again, I'm not going to move the camera just because, uh, again, just push for time and everything. But you'll, you've seen on a lot of my brake videos, they're all in the same place. So again, we're going to crack both of them first. It's a snug fit and very tight as well coming out. So this means is they're rusty. Has someone been here before and maybe damaged them? These questions will be answered very shortly. Too tight for this, I would say. Yep. Yep. Just as I thought. Now they don't look rusty, but they do look like they've got some thread lock or something in them, which kind of would explain why they're tight. But there shouldn't be thread lock in these. So who maybe whoever did it last, because obviously this is gonna have to have had brakes in its time. Maybe more head gasket than brakes, but still. There's something in there, but it doesn't look the right colour. I don't know. There's something definitely in there. Now once these are off, it's always a good idea to give them a really good clean. Now Depending where you are in the world, you might have to do different things. We don't really get big, rusty, kind of big flakes off like they do in kind of the rust belt in America. So we can 95% of the time get away with a really good wire brushing. Sometimes it might have to go a little bit harder, but we can, you know, more or less get away with that. So I'm going to give these a good clean. Again, I'm going to do that off camera because it's just rubbing with wire brushes and maybe knocking a little bit of the rust off. Same with this, and again on all a lot of my brake videos I've shown you how to do that. And now we need to get the disc off, and now you have to be careful because you don't really want to be hitting the back of the disc at the edge because what will happen is the shit will come in your face. So you want to wear goggles, but what you want to try and do first is just hit it here where you, you know you're not really at risk. You still want to be wearing goggles, and I know I'm not wearing goggles, but you want to be. Like they say, do as I say, not as I do. I didn't hit that hard. Hitting it around, and as you can see, it's come off. And you can see from here, just very, very rusty. But again, we're not really rusty there, which is good. I will give it a quick lick, kind of with the wire brush, but we're not actually really bad. With the disc only catches on the inner and the outer edges, like a lip in the disc. And uh, yeah, so I will give that a quick clean, get all the kind of the grease and shit off there. Once I've done that, we'll turn the camera back on and we'll start reassembly. Sweet! So I'll quickly show you this because everyone might not have the 90 grinder um, that actually does this, you know, but a lot of people are going to have like a normal grinder, like a four inch grinder. And you can get one of these wire brush wheels. Now these are serious. You can see just what it, it rips everything off. I'll quickly show you here on, let's get you a bit closer. Now you can see this bit here is still, that's really shiny and this here and in there is still kind of rusty. Just watch how quick this is. <laughs> I 
and there we go you can see it just rips everything out really powerful but you do need to wear goggles because these bits flick off and if they're flicking your eye goodbye eye but as you can see it rips everything off in seconds and you can even use this in here as well get it in there and do what you need to do on there so i said i'd quickly show you that now let's get everything back together right new disc as you can see it's kind of got this shiny stuff over the top of it which is to help um it stop it going rusty when it's being stored so i've got some brake cleaner i know it says wd-40 on it but it, believe me it's not wd-40 and you do not want to put wd-40 anywhere near your car this is the one with wd-40 in not this one anyway so flip this over line up our mark which is there that should line up with that i'll just put that on first just to kind of hold the disc for me yeah need to find a proper squirty bottle because when you put brake cleaner in normal bottles like that it just destroys the bottle as you can see it's not really squirting out properly but not to worry now nice and clean let's get the carrier back on which we've cleaned so we're all good and again you want to put both bolts in before you tighten them because if you tighten it in the wrong place, you won't be able to get the top bolt in. You might cross thread it trying to put it in. So I just want to make sure both of them are good. Right, once that's on, what I like to do is just give it a quick spin just to make sure, you know, nothing is binding, nothing is rubbing. And we're good to continue because if something's rubbing now, you know it's something you put on. If you put the brakes and everything on, you don't know exactly what's rubbing. You have to take everything back. I now know there's nothing rubbing. If I put the brakes on, there's a problem. At least I know it's the pads and nothing else. This pad goes inside the caliper itself. It has the spring on the back. So we'll butter this up with copper grease. We'll put this inside there, which we can't do yet because of the carrier is in the way we do have that anti sticky thing there but it doesn't really work so again we'll just butter it up i shouldn't have really have put copper grease in the middle here but i'll get away with it reason why i don't like putting copper grease in the middle first is because you might transfer it to the back of the pad i like to butter the ends up first and then put copper grease on but what we can do now is now we're ready for the second one is unclip this put that in and now bring it all back together this is where you hope you've opened up the caliper enough which I haven't so it needs to go back a bit more stay there now take this out hope this is big enough push the carrier back or the piston back a bit more there we go loads of ways of doing it loads of different tools now we can put this back and now it should fit And it still doesn't fit. So back a bit more, it must go. Now 
Now. Now you will fit. And there we go. Whatever you do, if you come across that situation, don't put it there and start smashing it with a hammer because you will do damage. You will damage your pads, possibly your disc, possibly everything. Don't, don't bother, believe me, it's not worth it. Just push the carrier, the piston back in the um, caliper and as you can see, it'll fit on nice and easy. I'm just gonna give these a quick clean, butter them up with Molly grease, which is here, and then uh, put the clip back on, and this side is done, 40. Right, as you can see, that's all been cleaned, looking good. Get some Molly grease, pull it all the way over. Put it in. And there we go. Just do the other one, tighten them up. Put the two little dust caps back. And uh, that pin or that clip that goes in here and we're done people. Right, just tighten these fellas back. Two little dust caps. They're very important, especially for the Allen keys because if crap gets in the Allen key head part of it, you don't tend to see it. You put the Allen key in, it doesn't go in all the way and it rounds the head, which makes it very difficult to get the bolt out. So these dust caps are really, really vital. Also, once you've done one pad and disc, always a good idea to pump your brakes because we push the piston back you're going to have no brakes if you do all of them like we're doing on this today and you forget to do that you're going to have to pump your pedal maybe five or six times before the car will even stop and you're going down the road to test that and you have no brakes you're going to get into trouble very quickly so Make sure that goes in the right place, which it does. It's just an anti-rattle clip, stops everything from rattling. The grease kind of stops things from squealing, and that's it. That's it, people. Job done. Do the other side, and then I'm going to do the back. It'll leave it all one video, and that's it. And then the car is done. Sort it! Just in case you thought that the other side wasn't too bad. Look at this. No pad here. This is metal on metal here. It's worn through the actual disc part of it. I mean, that's just metal on metal. So that's why we're changing them. Just in case you thought the other side was okay. This is the other back one, as you can see. Same thing in the middle, just rubbing metal on metal. Really rusty, really bad. Now, I know once I start showing this side, people are gonna say, well, hold on a second. That, this looks practically new. There's still meat left on the pads. Why are you changing it? We have a leaky shock, but anyway, that's not, <laughs> we're not doing any more on this. Just ignore the leaky shock, pretend it's not there, come round, and the reason we're doing it is BOOM! This is the reason we're doing it, just, yeah, just, I mean, yeah, so that's the reason people. Right, so as you can see from the far side, they're really bad, this side doesn't look too bad. I think that far side caliper is maybe seasoned a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. We have to get this done. There's an awful lot of money being spent and uh, we just have to get it done. So we have a T27 torque. Let's see if it actually opens. Nope, that's gonna break either the torque or it's going to break the, the bolt. So again, and just because something has a lifetime guarantee and it doesn't mean we have to break it. There we go. Lovely. That saves broken tools, saves drilling, saves everything. Sorted. Now, just give it. 
If you love taps. What we need to do now is take off the caliper from the carrier. Now we have, we need a 16 or a 17, is it? 17 and a 13. We hold the bolt underneath with the 17 and that with the 13, the little nut, we undo. Same again, do both sides or top and bottom at once. Don't just undo one. Handbrake's in the way of this one, so you have to use the open end of the 13, which is a bit dodgy sometimes. Because of that reason. <sighs> now, the other side didn't do it, but that is in our way. What I might have to do is get a quarter inch socket, maybe. Get a six sided quarter inch socket, which is hopefully small enough. Ah, yes. Saves a lot of grief. Gentle love taps. And. Oh, wow. That was tight. That's bloody good, because that could have been a, a hassle for a simple job. Could have turned into a nightmare there. Now with this, this is a wind back caliper, style caliper, so don't put a screwdriver in here. Try and force it back, because you won't be able to. You just do bloody damage. Now. The handbrake is also connected to it, so sometimes it can be kind of awkward to get out. But there we go. And you can see what I mean about the wine back. So what we need for that is a wine back tool. I've got an air one. And now I'm going to get asked the question. It's a beta with a number six um, connection on it for this. So put this in here. Line up the two prongs of the number six connection and now should be able to twist this caliper back should be kind of easy it's not that difficult if it's difficult you might want to put some maybe wd-40 in it check that the rubber isn't split because if the rubber is split and it's rusty it's not going to really go back even if it does it's just going to kind of seize again so yeah so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to spin that back, take off the pads, there we go, and then, also a good thing to check, is make sure these sliders are okay, they are okay, and as you can see they're not rusty or they're not compacted, but I am going to put some molly grease again on them, put them on the tip, slide it in there, I don't actually have to clean them because they're not bad. I should really just wind the caliper back first. As you can see, there's no compacted grease on there. Just give it a wipe and put fresh stuff on. That was just with a wipe. So put stuff on the tip that'll go all the way into it. And there we go. Again, do not use copper grease on there. Once I've wind that back, we'll get the carrier off, smash off the disc, put the new stuff on, sort it. Right, I said I'd turn the camera back on because this one's proven to be a nightmare. And actually, I only quickly looked at it and I realized there's no rubber on it. So yes, um, this really does need two rear calipers. But like I said, we have done an awful lot of work to this. I'm going to tell them uh, we're just going to have to be careful that I need to get the car back to them. They need the car back. I can't wait for any more parts to come and I don't think they particularly want to put any more parts in it so I'll tell them and uh, yeah so it's going to take me a while to get this back and then I'm going to obviously test it and if they stick on well then they're just going to have to replace them but oh the joys the joys of this job right I hope I got it back enough to be fair, it actually wasn't too bad. Um, the only reason I was struggling a bit is because it was all, it was kind of all the back, well, I think it was all the way back already. So, of course, I, I didn't see it moving back anymore and I was just kind of worried. But 
I think they're going to need to replace it. Well, they are going to need to replace it. Now, an E18 inverted torque for the rear caliper carrier. It's getting in the way of everything now. Now, we've already lubed these. Give these a good wire brushing. Same thing here as we did before with the front. We're going to do all that. So I'm going to get all that done. Once I get that done, we'll turn the camera back on and we'll go from there. Now, I've got the carrier back on, so that's uh, E18s. We just make sure they're tight properly. Yep, that one is. And there we go, they're tight. Pads on. Now, like I said, I like to butter up just the edges first, just to get them in. Once they're in, we can kind of butter them up there. Now, with this one, you can see it's got the indicator on the back piece of metal. That's for when the pad is low, you get this horrible scratching so you know something's going on and you can get it checked out before it goes into your disc and then you have to get new discs and everything. Now, so now do we have that back enough? And we do. So it did go back in enough, which is obviously really good. But I'm going to have to tell the customer they are looking at two new uh, rear calipers two new shock because this one's leaking again you can't just replace one shock absolutely pointless all i gotta do is tighten these 230 mil bolts back on put the disc on or put the wheel back on sorry and then that's it uh pump the pump the brake and we're all sorted my microphone battery is about to die all i gotta do is put the 230 mil bolts back on there tighten them up put the wheel back on pump the brakes make sure they're fine and, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna leave it at that because like I said, everything's about to die on my uh, camera. So that's it people. So look, hope it helps, thumbs up, subscribe, all the usual. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one, sorted.